The question of uh, cutting people off for uh, INFJs is an, is an interesting one. Um, it's, uh, it's simultaneously uh, less difficult than people make it out to be and uh, more difficult. Um, the way in which it is less difficult is simply that um, sometimes, you know, there are uh, things that people do that are so egregious that uh, we cut them off and it just happens and it's not true that uh, we'll always find reasons to justify keeping them on as friends you know it's uh, like most people sometimes something happens and uh, you just can't take it and if you like the the switch that takes place inside your mind that may have may have required quite a bit of energy to put it in motion just happened happens in and of itself depending on what you experience uh, at the same time, um, it's true that it can be really hard for people to, or for INFJ people especially, to uh, cut someone off um, that they ought to cut off. Um, if this person has not really done anything super egregious, but rather perhaps something like um, a series of, you know, consistent series of, like, uh, little things or things that look small but that if you take them together are just not really not worth the effort and energy to keep them, them on as, as friends and, and and even as acquaintances and you know there's ways of being toxic that is obviously super, uh, surreptitious and uh, you wouldn't necessarily be equipped to notice that straight away and it's true that INFJs can be masters in uh in the art of telling themselves a story of why they ought to continue doing something or they ought to continue having this person as a friend or as a close acquaintance, even though according to most objective criteria, it's not good for them. And again, this has to do with, you know, it's a, it's a compound effect of NI and FE together working to create narratives. Um, I've talked about this before in videos, but INFJs are fundament fundamentally creatures of narrative. They experience the world through a kind of narrative that makes helps them make sense of what's going on in front of them, given this the basic premise of uh, alienated NI, or just alienation full stop, as you know, the ecstatic soul, my first book on the INFJ, which you can get. Uh, at the links below um first book explains that you know like alienation is the first chapter of the exotic soul because it's the fundamental premise of the existential situation of someone who has the energy personality there is a sense of primordial removal from external reality due to uh, dominant ni and what it implies which is inferior se um this reliance on a sense of narrative is is connected with alienation from the external world. Because someone who is fundamentally in the external world, someone who's in the world out there, projecting themselves into the open, that's their life. They don't need a narrative to kind of articulate past, present, and future. Only someone who is alienated in the first place needs that. But I don't know if really needs that. They need that to make sense of themselves. They need that to make sense of what they're doing. And if they don't have that, or they find themselves in an environment which denies them that, I think they can often get to dark places where their being is atrophied, where they can feel that their being is atrophied, uh, that they remove their, their, you know, they deprive their possibilities, and it can lead to serious mental mental health problems. You know, um, so they need to be able to tell themselves a story about what they're doing. It doesn't need to be grandiose. It doesn't mean doesn't mean need to be a story about how they're going to become a superhero but a story that makes sense to them and that they value. And, and the cutting people off, in a sense, for, the, for it to become operative, it has to situate itself within a storyline as well, which would be the kind of, kind of a sub-storyline of the main story. There's a narrative, right? Um, you'll notice, if you're an INFJ and you struggle with anything, including with people cutting people off, but really, I could use so many examples, making a choice in a career, moving to a new place, uh, accepting someone new into your circle of friends so the opposite of cutting someone off make any kind of important decision or decision that requires time and effort and focus and patience and consideration before its decision is made or carried through 
if it makes sense within a particular narrative, it's, it's going to help you massively. It's going to liberate huge a huge surplus of energy for you to carry out these things. That's why, like, you know, when people say, well, you know, Ainu just has a se have a sense of destiny. I'd say the sense of destiny perhaps sounds a bit bombastic, and I won't necessarily say a destiny, but certainly a sense of narrative, right? And um, if you can, if you can articulate a story of why cutting this person off is important, this will really give you the energy to do it because we know it's never easy to do, particularly if someone's toxic and specialized in making you in some way dependent on them for whatever reason. Um, the gestalt switch can take place in that way, you know, because I always also talk about the holistic minds of INFJs. INFJs have minds, INTJs are the same, that function as a whole. So if there is a change that's made in a particular part of the landscape, everything else has to adjust to it. So like it's it's it, the change happens slowly, which is why decisions like cutting someone off is something that happens slowly and needs the narrative. If you like, it needs the whole to remain whole even through change, and nothing better than than governing that process through the coherence of a narrative that is itself changing but re retains its guiding thread. This is incidentally, this is really an NI FE combination, uh, but it's it it also works with FE and I, um, and this is why you'll notice that. Uh, Incidentally, uh, Jordan Peterson, who I think is an ENFJ, I've, I've made that point many times before, many of you think he's an INFJ, fine, he's either one or the other, I think ENFJ. He's always, you know, whenever he talks about his clients or, you know, in, or during his clinical practice, people that he's uh, uh, been, you know, a, a therapist for, helped, he always talks about, you know, write things down, try to, to, to give a narrative to things. I think for a lot of people who are not FE and I and I FE, this actually might not work. I don't know because I'm not them, but I I, I suspect it's not going to work for everyone. It might confuse people to to kind of understand why do I need to write things down. We don't need to write things down, even as FE and I or NI FE. But it's the whole idea of narrative, the whole idea of narrative, having a narrative in your mind that you subscribe to, that you respect and value, that thing is right for you. And within this frame, you can have sub chapters that are focused on things that you know uh, that you want to do but you find difficult, that will give you the energy. That includes coding people off. Okay, so let me know in the comments what you think. Uh, for the concrete living of INFJ, particularly uh, the rich, having leading a rich, meaningful, and purposeful life, don't forget, the infinite soul is available. It's new, it's three months old, and you can find it at the links below. Don't hesitate. And Patreon page, by the way, new supporters massively help. Keep me afloat. Thank you so much. There's a link below. See you soon, guys. Bye-bye.